Cool, I shoot faster. I have transcended my mortal coil. I exist on a plane somewhere between game and reality. Tremble beneath me for I... <laughs> Risk of Rain 2 is a roguelike third-person shooter, which is the sequel to Risk of Rain, a 2D roguelike platformer. It's also a very addicting game, because one of the appeals I think most rogues have is the thrill of getting the god run, feeling overpowered and unstoppable, which Roar 2 does a phenomenal job of. The gameplay loop consists of entering a stage, killing creepy critters to get gold and experience while finding the teleporter. No time to dilly-dally, however, as time is constantly ticking, which increases the difficulty. When you do find and turn on the telly, a big bad shows up to try and wreck face, and you'll need to stay inside the zone in order to charge your way out while fighting for your life. Now, if you just run straight for the exit, the boss will probably style on you. Luckily, someone left dozens and dozens of chests around, and wouldn't you know it, they take just the same currency you're picking from the pockets of the locals. The treasures they hold will generally tweak your stats and or add effects like giving a small chance to fire off a rocket, or chaining lightning between foes. Alongside chest giving power-ups, Shrine can offer challenges or rewards, or just take all your money because this piece of crap won't give me an item! There's always the blood drive paying you on the spot, or the Shrine of the Mountain, which you always gotta hit. Seriously, always activate this. You're not playing Risk of Rain 2 unless you are mountain gaming. If you have lunar coins, which most seasoned players have one or two of, you can pray to the Newt Newt to scoot scoot to his shoperoni and swap out some items, or choose the next stage. Plus, there's a secret little back room which contains a portal to horrid atrocities, but at least you get some items from it if you live. A chance of precipitation deuce is nice in the sense that you kind of choose when it ends. After a few stages, you'll be taken to a primo telly, and if you want to shoot for the stars, you can let it whisk you away to the moon to battle the air quote final boss. Or you can choose the loop, sending you back to a stage one level with the difficulty remaining and enemies getting new elite versions that can wreck you. That's the beauty of the game. It allows you to play how you want. If you don't like the RNG nature of the drops, it's possible to unlock an option to make every item that drops whatever you want. That way you can experiment with builds and try and find your favorite world ending combination. The other unlockable artifacts allow for a lot of silly options that vary tremendously, one making it so every stage you swap characters, another making it so enemies drop bombs on death, or one that spawns a doppelganger that hunts you down every 10 minutes. <laughs> Who would like multiple huntresses chasing them down? I've actually recently started doing mayo runs, which is having them all on at once because I like suffering and sorrow. I managed to beat one too. The game can be played with four people normally, but of course I gotta talk about the mods. There are so many for this game and so many fantastic options. That four player limit doesn't exist with mods. Have as many friends as you want and the game will still scale. A lot of the mods I use are just quality of life stuff, showing stats, item descriptions, stuff like that. The game can get a little stupid and vanilla when you are first starting because items will drop and you'll have no idea what they do or how they stack. I always hate it in a game when you kind of have to wiki something in order to figure out how it works. Like just tell me how many glasses I need for 100% crit. It can also be very annoying that normally chests don't disappear when opened because you'll see one in the distance and be like, yeah, there we are. Normal co-op can be a pain without share suite since items can't normally be shared with characters, so if you play with a jerk, which I often do, one person will have 20 items and the other will have one. I'm, I'm the 20. All the vanilla characters are great in my opinion, except for Rex. He's lame. If none of the vanilla survivors fit your style, maybe try adding one of the classic Risk of Rain characters like Aurelian Soul, Samus, Phoenix Wright, or... Hey, it's me, Goku! I like playing the Ditto mod, which lets you transform into any character you see and becoming a gunner turret to slowly amass an army of metal to show this puny planet that flesh is weak. The mods even go so far as to add custom game modes, like King Combat Arena, which turns the game into some sort of like... Auto chest thing minus the auto and the chest part. You farm enemies between matches and buy random items and then face off against other players. You can even bet against combatants for even more dosh. The game has a ton of stuff to keep you coming back and offering new and difficult challenges. They keep saying every update is going to be the final one, but it, it's not. There's, I'm sure there's going to be more updates even if you don't count mods. It's a blast to play with friends and randos alike. Frequently goes on sale too, so definitely worth a purchase if you like these types of games. Granted, if you do play on console, you won't be able to use the mods, which basically justify the price in and of itself. I mean, seriously, they allow you to play a multitude of League of Legends characters in a game that doesn't suck. 